Hi, I'm Corbett Lunsford from Brelly Performance Workshop in Chicago. On behalf of the Illinois Association of Energy Raters, I'm going to give an introduction to how to use the tools that we teach to in the Duct and Envelope Tightness Verifier Program, which is the DET Verifier. So you're going to see two main pieces of equipment, the blower door and the duct tester. And we're going to look at both of those. These are both made by Retrotech, and we actually are very grateful because Retrotech gave us this equipment. Um, it was donated for this program specifically. So we're going to be using just Retrotech uh, equipment for this video. If you want to get to know Minneapolis equipment, I have other videos through the Building Performance Workshop. Uh, that deal with those, and I'll be providing links to those as well. So let's go ahead and just look at this piece of equipment here. First is the blower door. Blower door is the most important thing in home performance, period. Infrared is not where it's at, it's the blower door. Okay, so this is the blower door. This is called the shroud. It's a nylon uh, piece of fabric that's giant. It replaces the door, uh, the front door, or the whatever exterior door you're going to choose to do this test. It is held in place by the frame, which is this red aluminum very sexy, shiny thing here, which has these uh, uh, knobs and locking cams. Okay, so the frame is held together with the knobs and the locking cams, and it holds the shroud in place. The shroud has a window in it. The window is for telling the UPS guy not to drop his box right in front of your fan. Fan is the central piece of this. So the fan is uh, large. It is very scientifically calibrated to make sure we know exactly how much air is going through it if we have a certain pressure differential. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up the manometer, uh, which is the pressure gauge that we're going to use to find out what exactly is going on and be able to quantify it. So we've got our uh, hoses here that we're going to do that with. We're going to leave the, sh the cover for the fan in place for a moment, and I'll tell you why. This is our manometer, okay? So it's the same color scheme as all the rest of the stuff. It's very brightly colored. It's fun. Home performance is fun, right? So first thing you need to do always is turn it on, okay? Now I'm going to give you an introduction to this entire uh, piece of equipment. Let's come over to the table. <clears throat> first thing that happens when you turn this piece of equipment on with the on button, which is right here, is it's going to tell you this is what the serial number and the model and blah, blah, blah. You press any key to continue, and it immediately starts giving you a ton of information. So as you can see here, it's measuring pressure on channel A. And on channel B, which is right underneath it, and I'm going to switch back here so that we're measuring pressure as well. This is what's called a dual channel digital manometer. So it has two independent channels. I have a video that I'm linking to right now that is about the architecture of these manometers and how they're all put together exactly the same. So don't be intimidated. There's channel one, channel two, or channel A, channel B, okay? On channel A, we've got a very slight pressure difference, and on channel B, we've got a very slight pressure difference. These are different probably because there's a very slight breeze going on at the back of this gauge. It's so sensitive because one Pascal is about the weight of a post-it note. So this is a very, very small pressure difference. This is a very slight breeze. Up here, we've got our battery life. As you can see, we're about 75% charged. Uh, here, we've got our N factor, which is a coefficient. You do not have to worry about that. Just leave that the way that it is. Here, we've got our time average, which right now we're reading every eight seconds. It's kind of averaging everything that happened in the last eight seconds. Up here, we've got our auto zero, which always, always stays on. Down here, we have our device. And this is telling us that we're going to use the Retrotech Duct Tester 200. This is the duct uh, tester that we're going to use in a little bit. So we're actually going to hook up the other manometer with this piece of equipment in a moment. And here we've got the range configuration, which is the number of rings that we've got on the fan. It's the amount of air that's allowed to go through the fan. Basically, we've got a high flow ring, a low flow ring, and a mid flow ring. So you can start to change this. Uh, the most important thing to change is always what mode we're in. So to change this, you can see I'm just going to, uh, you don't have to go out too far. The mode button is right here at the top left. I'm just going to press that, and you can see channel B start to change. Now we're in pressure flow. Now we're in pressure and equivalent leakage area. Now we're in pressure and air changes. And now we're back. So it's basically got a set number of modes that we can be in. Now, the, one of the beauties of a Retrotech piece of equipment is that you can configure what modes you want to have available to you. So we can have, you know, more than 10 modes if we wanted to. We don't want that because it makes it more complicated. I can change my range over here if I'm in pressure flow mode from low 
to open and mid, as you can see with this range configuration button. So this button corresponds with this readout. Uh, setup is the back end kind of administration of this device. We don't need to worry about that. Baseline is something we're going to use on the blower door in a moment. The time average, which is number five, deals with this time that's flashing up here. That's eight seconds right now is what it's reading. If I press this button, you can see this turns to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, one minute, two minutes, and off. So now it's going to fluctuate like crazy. You can see that this is changing pretty rapidly here. Okay, the auto zero, like I said, always stays on, so you don't even worry about that. Here we've got set pressure, set speed, and jog and hold, which are all the automatic uh, features that this device has. So you can control the fan just with a touch of a button here. You can say, I want the fan to run to 100%, and it'll do so. Down here we've got device, which is also the number zero. And I can change the device that I'm using, which is here, with this button. So I can switch from the Retrotech 1000 blower door fan to the Retrotech Duct Tester 200 and back and forth. Now if I had more devices, I could set my manometer to know that I've got more devices and to offer me more options. But right now for this training, we're only dealing with two devices and that's why it's only giving us those two because I've told it I only want you to ever remember that I have these two. We've got on off, which is also going to turn off my light. I've got enter and I've got exit. Okay, so if you want to turn it off, you just press and hold the on-off button. That is your introduction to the manometer. Now let's go ahead and get this wired up with our uh, piece of equipment here. First thing is, I want to make sure to turn it on. I always turn it on before I hook up uh, gauges, or excuse me, hoses to it, because I want to get the automatic damper that's built into this, it's a safety device, active before I start introducing a pressure to it. So I've got my snake here. Uh, there's one end of this snake that is very nice and neat. That is the end that I'm going to plug into my manometer. I've got three hoses. One is an Ethernet cable, and that's going to get plugged in right there. It snaps in place. I've got a red hose and a yellow hose. The red hose goes to the red tap, and the yellow hose goes to the yellow tap. Bingo. Easy as pie, right? Okay. Now the other end of my... Uh, hose looks like this. I've got a huge length of red hose. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the nice and neat portions of this first. So I've got my Ethernet cable, which is my motor drive. That gets plugged in. I've got two ports here that I can plug it into. It does not matter which one I plug it into, so I'm just going to pick one. Bam. And I've got my yellow hose, and I've got a nice yellow tap right here. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, like so. Now the rest of this red hose is what's called my reference hose for the pressure outside. So I need to make sure that this is going outside to monitor the pressure out there so that we can use that to compare the pressure inside. And now we have pressure differential, which is always what a pressure measurement is. It's the difference between two ends. So we're going to put this outside. Normally we would use one of these two ports that's at the bottom of my door here. You can see one of them right here. And there's another one on the other side. I would simply go out here with it. Instead, for the moment, just because we're using a uh, simulation tent, which is what we use in your training, we're going to go out this port here because it's essentially this is a tent that's a, just a couple cubic feet. Uh, and if you blow directly on the end of this hose, you're going to get a really crazy reading. So we're just going to kind of get it out of the way of the turbulence that's going to be introduced here. So I'm leaving my panel on here. And you can see my gauge has given me a huge, much less detailed reading here. It's going to do that every couple seconds. If I don't touch it, it'll say, oh, okay, you must be just looking at me from a distance and not messing around anymore. I'm going to show you the numbers that you really care about nice and big. So in order to get out of this, I can hit exit or enter, whatever you want. Uh, I want to be in pressure flow mode because a blower door test is a measure of pressure and flow, always. It's not just the airflow, it's not just the pressure. So pressure flow, right now it's saying on pressure on channel A, I've got hovering right around zero pascals, and on channel B, I've got too low, and that's because the fan's not on, there is no flow. It says I'm using my Retrotech Duct Tester 200, so I want to change my device by pressing this button down here, device. Now I'm using the Retrotech 1000, which is this fan right here. 
it says I'm going to be using an open configuration and based on the size of the house that I'm testing here this is probably going to need a lot less so I'm going to hit my range configuration button and I'm going to switch from A to B to C4 is the configuration that I'm going to choose to use. Okay, so that just means that I've got the flow ring that's named C4 in here, and you'll learn all about that in the course. I've got my auto zero on. I've got my time average. I want to be a little bit more easy, so I've got it on one second right now. You can see that it's settled down. My battery life is all right, and I am ready to go ahead and baseline. So the baseline measurement is to make sure that you're adjusting. There are three main driving forces for pressure imbalances between a house and outdoors. You want to adjust for all of them. There is stack effect, there is wind, and there is HVAC. The HVAC is the easiest one. We're going to take care of that by just turning off all the HVAC. So we have made sure that all of the fans in the house, the exhaust fans, the air handler, etc., are turned off. We've got wind and stack effect. Those two are going to show up in my, what's called my baseline pressure, right now, between inside and outside, which is what I'm seeing on channel A. Now if I want to zero that out, all I have to do is hit the word baseline here, and it's starting to take a time sample. You can see here it's counting up one, two, three, four, five seconds. And it's giving me the average Pascal difference between indoors and outdoors over the entirety of my time sample. So if that number is less than one Pascal for 10 seconds, it's going to mean the same thing for this gauge if it's less than one Pascal for a minute or 10 minutes. I might as well just hit it. If it's not moving at all over here, I just hit enter and I accept. And now up here, instead of my battery readout, it's going to show me what my baseline pressure was, which is about a tenth of a Pascal, which is a tiny, tiny reading. Okay, now I'm ready to go ahead and open this fan up. I'm going to set this to the side, take my cover off, and you can see we've got all these different rings here. This is the C ring, okay? Now, the reason I left the fan cover in place is because I've got these four holes that I am even a little mystified by. Um, they should probably have plugs in them. We might take them up. Uh, this is not a real thing. So what we want to focus on is this. C4 means I'm going to pull out four of these. Okay. If I wanted to use the B ring, that's this ring right here, which I can get to by pulling that off. That would be B configuration. A configuration would mean taking this off and leaving just that, and open would mean taking the entire thing off and just having the yellow fan wide open. So I'm going to leave C in place. I'm going to take out one, two, three, four uh, rings here so that I can run my test. Come on over here and check this out. We've got our power cable plugged in, and I've got the power on. You can see the solid green light here. So we're ready to run the test. I'm going to hit set pressure, and it's asking me what room pressure do you want to be at. I hit 50 pascals, and I hit enter. You can see that we've got this running. And we're getting up to 50 pascals. We're at 47, somewhere around 45. And it's telling me that at the pressure I am actually at, which is 46, 47, 48, 50.8, 50.7, it's this CFM. I don't want to know what it is at 47.8, 48, 51, blah, blah, blah. I want to know what it is at 50, so I'm going to hit this button right here, which is the at pressure button. And now, as you can see here, I'm reading 500 and roughly 540 CFM at 50 pascals. Now this number in real life is never going to be nice and smooth. So what I can do is increase my time average here and give myself a much smoother number by taking the average over the last eight seconds. And it gives me roughly 549 CFM. So that's the number I'm gonna go with. I go ahead and hit exit turns it off. Now I'm ready to move on to my duct blaster. Wasn't that easy? So now we're moving on to duct tightness testing. This is your duct testing fan. Okay, we have the same exact setup. It is a tiny version of the blower. This is the out end of the 
fan, so the air is moving this way, we're going to run a depressurization test. I have, as you can see here, exactly the same setup as before. I have two ports for the Ethernet cable, and I'm going to plug the ugly end of my uh, snake, if I have an ugly end, and in this case we have two pretty ends, which I like, into either one of these, it does not matter. Again, yellow, green, yellow, green. Very simple. Okay, now here's my light. As you can see, we don't have power yet, so that's not flashing yet. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on over here. We've got our power cable plugged in, and this is my power switch. Turn that on, and I've got a solid green light over here. On this side, let's go take a look at what the light is doing here. We have a flashing green light. That means the status is not complete yet because I do not have a manometer hooked up to my fan yet. So we're going to need to grab that. Exactly the same as what we just saw. Okay, So we can simply turn it on before we hook anything up to it. It's telling you what model it is. You hit any key. And now we're going to set it up exactly as we did before. The Ethernet cable goes into the Ethernet port. We've got yellow and green. Yellow, green, bam. Now, this is a duct test. Just like we had on the blower door, a second uh, hose that went outside. In this case, we want to know what the pressure is in the ducts. So I have a third hose that I need to hook up which is they provide a very long uh, hose for. It's colored blue, and I'm going to plug it into the blue tap right here. Okay, and the other end of this goes, yes, you guessed it, into the ductwork. Okay, so I'm, let's pretend that we've got a duct system here. We're in my training center right now, so we're not going to use that. Okay, and now we're ready to go. We need to configure our manometer so that we're set up. And you can, as you can see over here, our status light is solid green at this point. We're ready to go, okay? So first thing is always mode, which is the top left button. I'm going to get into pressure flow. Just like the blower door, this is a measure of pressure on channel A and flow on channel B. Channel A is on top, channel B is on the bottom. The pressure is about 0.2 pascals, and the flow is too low to measure because the fan's not on. We're using the RetroTech Duct Tester 200. Our configuration is open. We've got our time average to one second. Auto zero is on. Looks like we're ready to go. Okay, we want to make sure that the flow ring that we have installed here is what is actually on the fan. Same thing here. I hit set pressure, which is number seven here. And it says, what pressure do you want to get to? And I say 25, because that is the pressure we always do duct testing to. And then I simply hit enter. And as you can hear, it's turning on. Here's the speed percentage that we're running to. You can see it climb. And you can see what CFM we've got. Now we have almost no pressure differential at all because we're not hooked up to a duct system. You can see that the CFM is rising. Now in order to stop this, I just hit exit. Bingo. Okay, and then you would make sure to break down your equipment, take all the tape off the register, things like that, all of the things that you're going to learn in your formal training, which is important that you get. I hope that this has been instructional for you, and I hope that you're looking forward to the training. I'm Corbett Lunsford. This is Building Forms Workshop. Tune in next time.